have to have a police chief that will be following instructions. And that's not what happened. Thanks for joining us here on 13 News at Noon, everyone. I'm Karen Campbell. You just heard from Southport Mayor Jim Cooney at a press conference that wrapped up moments ago talking about why he recently fired the city's police chief. He now says it was because Vaughn wouldn't hand over documents. Now, the mayor ousted Tom Vaughn on Monday following a desire to require the Board of Public Works and Safety to approve hiring officers listed in those documents. Mayor Cooney says he needed a list of the reserve officers and their hire dates that he never got. Police chief reports to the mayor and uh, I decided to take the police department in a different direction. Now Vaughn says he questions the move and the timing. He says he got fired two hours after filing a grievance against the mayor. The shortest term is for him overstepping. He was asking officers to do things that um, weren't by code or by ordinance. I'm angry and I think it, it, it was a disservice. I filed a grievance and I get terminated, so I, I find that kind of odd. Now, Vaughn says he's hired attorneys to fight the termination. For now, the mayor has appointed Deputy Chief Nate Williams as interim chief. Of course, we'll be following these developments in this story. Now let's get you a check on the forecast. Of course, it's a sunny day outside. You see the blue skies and the clouds in the forecast uh, warming up on this Wednesday afternoon. Sean is here to break it all down for us. Uh, are, are we saying that um, we're not going to be in for sunny skies? Yeah, no, longer? we got some sunshine, some scattered clouds. Great day to get outdoors because we're back to unsettledness for tomorrow. Gotcha. Some much needed rain, by the way, Karen. This is the 12th straight day without rain in central Indiana. We'll do something about that over the next 24 to uh, 36 hours here, but we're enjoying the sun. Temperatures uh, warming up as they should. It is August. It's still summer and uh, we're at 81 right now here in Indy, 82 degrees in Martinsville. You've probably noticed it's just a little bit more humid than it's been the past couple of days and that was expected, but nothing compared to the mugginess that's on the way. Uh, going into tomorrow afternoon and then around here on Friday. Visible satellite, we're seeing some high clouds and a few scattered lower level clouds uh, developing here. Warm to get out to the State Fair, and that's where you can find Dave and Dom. Tailgate at the fair from 4 to 6. If you're heading out or if you have any outdoor plans here this evening, know that it is going to be warm. Temperatures in the 85 to 88 degree range here. Big cluster of storms to the west of us now. We're going to time it out, talk about severe weather potential all ahead in the seven day forecast. All right, thanks, Sean. Right now we are working to learn more about a car crash involving a semi truck in Greenwood that we first told you about as breaking news on 13 Sunrise. That crash happened around 2.15 this morning at the intersection of Graham and Allen Roads. That's on Commerce Parkway West Drive. That's an industrial area near the Nestle Waters Warehouse, Nestle Waters Warehouse. Police tell us the driver of the car was pronounced dead at the scene. The semi driver is OK. And right now, investigators are working to learn what led up to this crash. And once we learn more, of course, we will uh, let you know online uh, and on air. Well, just minutes ago, we learned the name of a woman killed in a, car, a crash rather on the city's east side. Investigators say they were called to the East 30th Street area near Shadeland and uh, 465 just before midnight. When first responders arrived at the scene, they found 54 year old Murta Piscara Lopez in the road. EMS took Lopez to the hospital in critical condition, but doctors, they were not able to save her. Now, police tell us the driver stayed on the scene and is cooperating with them on this investigation. Right now, 13 News is working to learn what led up to that crash. Heartbreak on the south side of Indianapolis. This afternoon, we are hearing from the family of a woman killed in a murder-suicide and the two teens now without a mother or father. 41-year-old Ashley Nolan was shot Monday night at a home near Bluff Road and Edgewood Avenue family shared her picture with us and say Ashley was a loving daughter, sister and mother. Her loved ones say her two daughters are in the hospital recovering, both of them seriously hurt in that shooting. Police say the shooter was 43 year old Thomas Nolan, Ashley's husband and the girl's father. 
He died of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigators say Thomas Nolan was a former IMPD reserve officer and neighbors simply shocked by what happened. Something like this is just craving, you know what I mean? Something like this is just so beyond the pale for when you're mm -hmm. literally catty corner, you know what I mean? Yeah. Catty corner to my home. It was just terrible, you know what I mean? I see those girls get up and go to school, get off the school bus. Mm -hmm. I... IMPD says Nolan retired in May. Perry Township school leaders confirm the girls are students in the district. And the school is providing resources for anyone needing support. And domestic violence is something that we see and hear about all too often. The Indiana Coalition Against Domestic Violence has reported about 45 domestic related homicides this year. Now here in Indianapolis, we've reported at least four of those cases in 2024. And people with the coalition say many times people never expected to get that far. They urge friends and family of people dealing with domestic violence to create a large support system. Please be that support person who says, whatever you need, I will help you. I will be here for you. That is the most critical thing that survivors need is support in when they are ready and able and feel prepared, then being supported and reaching out for help. Group leaders say since the pandemic, the number of these homicides have increased around the state. And we have a complete list of resources for domestic violence survivors. You'll find them at WTHR.com slash scene on 13. Well, 13 News is working to see if charges have been filed against a burglary suspect accused of hitting police and leading them on a chase. It all happened early yesterday morning on the south side of Indianapolis. Now you can see the damage to one of the squad cars in this picture shared by Metro Police. No officers were hurt. Police took the suspect to the hospital after they complained about experiencing some pain. This afternoon, uh, that suspect is facing multiple charges, including preliminary charges of burglary. And the family of a family of four is safe after a stranger uh, warned them of a fire in their home. Now she calls it divine intervention. This all unfolded Sunday near 21st and Emerson on the east side. Our Chase Howell talked to the woman who says she didn't hesitate to help the moment she saw the flames. Antonia Mitchell says she was walking home Sunday morning after a night out with friends when she started seeing smoke coming from this now boarded up duplex. So I did a quick sprint from here and straight up to the door. I tried to open it, but I got smacked with smoke. So the next move was to turn to the neighbor's door and get them out. Inside that portion of the duplex, a family of four, Mitchell was able to wake up and get outside. It was, you know, grandparents and two small grandkids. Um, one little girl, she had on just a nightgown and it was super cold. So I gave her my jacket and my socks, you know, and made sure everybody was okay. Once they were out, Mitchell says she and her friend went around to the other side of the duplex banging on windows. One of them even shattered and cut Mitchell's hand, but sadly, they weren't able to get to the woman inside. Miss Mary and how she passed, that's what hurts me the most. She was trying to get out and she couldn't. And I was on the other side of the door and I, I couldn't get it open. Mitchell says she's never met the people who she helped out that night, but would often wave to them as she passed by their home. You don't be a bystander because more people get hurt. Um, you know, I growing up was like not at home, but in maybe other social settings was kind of looked over and, you know, hurt and bullied by other people. And I kind of always internalized that, so I always made it my mission to help other people. Since the fire, Mitchell says she has since checked in on the family she helped. She says the family is thankful for pounding on their door that night. Reporting in Indianapolis, Chase Howell, 13 News. All right, thank you, Chase, for that. When you call 911, you expect help as soon as possible, right? But will that help always arrive in time? Now, we learned many of our small, uh, smaller or state's small rural fire departments are struggling because they rely on volunteers, and it's become harder and harder to find them. Tonight, Dustin Grove shares the fight for firefighters and new help coming from the state to make it easier to recruit. You can see his story tonight on 13 News at 11.